Welcome to Sunday Scares, where I talk about what's on my mind, like bats and blood and being a vampire, I don't know. Hi everyone, how's it going? Happy Halloween? Yeah, yeah, fuck you, okay? It's a bit late, leave me alone, but listen, alright? I mean, you can't say that I didn't... Trying to, I don't know, what do you want from me? Alright, I literally tried. I'm not even trying to be funny. I genuinely did try and make a Halloween special. Okay, and this was last week. And let me tell you, alright, that episode was dog shit. And I'm glad I didn't upload it. Because 40 minutes in, I realized, hey, uh, this is a really stupid episode and I'm not going to upload it. So I didn't. So we're here. And it's a week late. And I know my podcast has been late a lot, like a lot of my videos, alright? Sue me, okay? I didn't realize I was going to have an active week. I'm tr still fucking trying to get everything back on track, and now I've got a plan for something that I am just all over the place about right now. So a lot's going on right now, alright? Leave me alone. Sorry, that was very aggressive. Welcome to the Halloween special of Sunday Thoughts. Uh, last, I just can't get over the fact of how um, shitty last week's episode would have been. I mean, what a wonderful um, podcast episode to leave it off of where all I did was shit talk mix Mixer and I had no idea what I was talking about. So instead of going, ah, you know what, I should upload a podcast to sort of, like, remedy that whole situation. You know when, like, The Undertaker had that shit match in, um, in, in Crown Jewel, and then he was like, all right, well, I'm gonna need another one to balance myself out. You know what I mean? I kind of needed to do that, and I didn't. So now we're here. Now we're in this neck of the woods now, which is fantastic. So, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna fucking trudge through this and see how this goes, because so far I've just been uploading a bunch of videos, and they've been going pretty well, aside from uh, the ones where my audio just sounds like I've decided to just fucking, I don't know, get a voice change for some reason, which is great. I love when I record, like, fucking half an hour of gameplay, only to find out that the audio's been shit the entire time. Man, oh man, it sure is great. And I can fix it, kind of, but then I start skipping sort of, and it just takes my video from like an 8 to like a 2, which I, ju I just gotta say, I'm just thrilled that that's happening, it's, it's just, it's beautiful, I fucking love it, anyway, what's been going on with me lately, like I said, I've been having a very busy week, okay, I, um, I was supposed to go to Frightland, I, listen, I went on an escapade with my uh, with my good friend Tendo, and that escapade. Well, I I don't know. Like, hey, it's it's not weird. It's hard to explain. So, let me start out by saying, let's go all the way back, okay? Let's go all the way back in time to where I was supposed to do the first Halloween special and how shit that went. So, for those of you who don't follow me on Twitter, which you totally should at Enor Sewell, if I'm remembering correctly. I want to give a shout out to me not knowing my own fucking Twitter handle. That's fantastic. But um, if you don't follow me on Twitter, I posted two things regarding the night that I was having. And one of them was a video of a guy in a Fortnite gingerbread costume dancing to some Mexican music in the background because we were at a party in town. And I was like, I'm not leaving until I'm having as much fun as this guy. And then I tweeted later on. I said, hey, I'm having as much fun as this guy. That was about... Two drinks, two Long Islands in, and $20 spent, which was a horrible fucking mistake that I will never do again if anybody who's around me lets me spend $10 on a Long Island. I don't want to be friends with you anymore, it's all I'm saying. Uh, I don't even want to be friends with myself because I managed to let that shit slide because I normally don't do that because I'm very fucking cheap. Anyway, it was a good Long Island though. Listen, it did the job, all right? So, I mean, listen, I also was very loud and for some strange, she literally, the I went up to the uh, bar and the lady was like, hey, drinks are 10 bucks. I was like, great. For some strange reason, my brain went, <laughs> my brain said, I see the 10, let's just knock off a number there. And now it's nine. So I sat there and I gave her the 10 
got my drink, and I sat there like a fucking goober waiting for my $1 change. She had to fucking stare at me awkwardly and go, hey, it was 10 bucks, pal. You can leave. And I went, right. I uh, initially remember you saying that, so I don't know why I've decided to stand here. Also, I was kind of partially watching I Am Legend. I couldn't hear a fucking thing, but I mean, it's I Am Legend. I mean, you know, it had Will Smith and a dog. I'm fucking mean. But, uh... <laughs> Then I went out, st danced awkwardly as fuck. I didn't dress up because I didn't know that we were going to a Halloween party. So uh, I just was j just imagine like some fucking dumbass in like a hoodie because it's the only one that he has and he doesn't have any other hoodies in his house. Uh, Coco's yelling at me because of my uh, choice. I More than likely, she's probably yelling at the neighbors who are doing some sort of yard work. I'm not 100% sure. Hold on. Have to, all right, I'm just making sure seeing people are home. I like to do that, all right? I like to monitor just to make sure. Leave me alone. Anywho, uh, stood there like an absolute fucking tool. Um, I may just be blowing this out of proportion, but, you know, sometimes it's fun to... Whatever. I stood there, blue hoodie, uh, decent outfit. I can't fucking remember what I was wearing. I just know that it was an outfit that I threw on where I was like, well, I'm going to a party. I want to at least look semi-decent, so I tried to. Uh, I think I put on my, you know those pants, you know those pants. The the I don't know how. To, I don't even know. What I'm trying to describe pants. Anyway, riveting podcast. This, <laughs> I, I I danced awkwardly around like a drink and a half in. I was like, hey, I'm I'm starting to like this music. I didn't fucking know how to how to how to dance to Mexican music, you know, you know, the way you dance to, like, certain types of Mexican music, I don't know how to do that, so I was kind of, you know, just awkwardly, just swaying back and forth, doing a little shimmy, you know what I'm saying, doing, doing, I'm doing it right now, doing, doing a little shimmy, and that sort of stuff, that was great, um, Gingerbread Fortnite guy was fucking, he was the guy, he, I also went to the party, like, with him, he was in our little, like, group that we were having, because it was me, Tendo, that guy, and, um, yeah, obviously, I'm not going to say his name. It was me, Tendo, that guy, and another guy. And I'm just going to leave it at that because I totally don't forget what his name was. Anyway, <laughs> that's mean. I mean, it's not... Sorry. I apologize. I, like, he's going to watch this. Wow. Anyway, <laughs> danced awkwardly. Started dancing less awkwardly, but I don't know how to dance. I just know how to... I, I, I have rhythm. I just can't dance. So I was just fucking throwing my body in different directions hoping that somebody would go hey that's dancing and i'd have to i'd turn around and go hey, you thought and then go back to doing it and then there was a dance contest um and then uh gingerbread guy got second place which is great i don't know if he got the money though i didn't see him get the money but hopefully that who knows i had a good time it was great the, the day after, um, I was like, if we could put on a scale of 1 to 10 how hungover I was, apparently I was hungover enough to not do the fucking podcast, which was fucking great because I thought, ah, you know what, I'm not even that bad, I can do it, and then like 40 minutes in, I could feel my body just start deteriorating, and it, it was the worst, and I just hated it. And I just fucking, I, I, you, when you're doing something that you know is going to take a while and you look at the time and you go, that's how long I've been sitting here. That's a problem. That's a pretty big problem. I'm just going to say when you're kind of looking at the time going, uh, still going a little bit. To go. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. It was a wreck. I just want to point out too. This is the Halloween special. Okay. Fuck you. This is going to be the Halloween special because I don't want to skip this because I've just been all over the place, and I haven't had time to think of another podcast episode, all right? Sue me. Um, wrote the, obviously, I'm starting to, I wrote down notes now. I've decided that that's going to be something that I need to fucking do, because winging it on an, for an hour and a half, I can only do that when I'm playing a video game, not when I'm talking to a fucking microphone in my room. That's just not something that I have the talent for. I have to actually know what the fuck I'm saying. So I've decided to write down a couple notes for this, but uh, I seem to have come in another roadblock because I've only down, I've only wrote down two fucking topics. Yeah, I I don't know when I wrote this. I'm not even making this up. I don't know. I forget when I wrote this, but it had to have been before I was uh, hungover. And then I looked at it again as I was hungover and went, and went, I can't think of a fucking third topic. I have a third topic, and that one I'm going to wing. I don't care. Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm 
so aggressive, but I'm not aggressive. I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to tell you what's what. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to relay the information back to you. That's all I'm trying to do. But uh, what else is what else happened? I went to the party, and that was great, and I had a good time. And literally since then, it's just been me tr just trying to like. You know when a robber robs and a cop chases? That's been me. I've been the cop chasing the robber, and the robber's been my fucking schedule. I've also been thinking about streaming again. I have no idea how I'm going to start doing that, because I want to stream at a different time. I want to stream, stream in the morning now, again. Cause, well, no, because I used to do it in the afternoon, so I want to do it in the morning. Uh, I don't want to do the same story games because who the fuck is going to turn, who's going to see my name pop up and go, oh, there goes Ed again, he's playing, what's that, Deus Ex Human Revolution again, uh, wow, I haven't seen him play that since, you know, fucking three and a half months ago, I, I totally want to see him play that fucking game again, that'd be great, what level is he on, the same fucking one that he left off on, so I have to fucking watch this Yahoo go through the whole, listen, I'm not doing that, okay? That's not happening. I I know I left a lot of games up in the air, okay? And I know I'm breaking my rule of not finishing the games that I said I wanted to finish, but come on! Who the fuck wants to see this fucking Yahoo go back into Resident Evil 7 again for only like an hour because I probably don't have that much fucking gameplay left? Like, what else did I even have to do? I can't fucking remember if I'm gonna be fairly honest I could probably go back and check no you know what I'm gonna go look right now what did, what did I almost opened all fucking 12 of my tabs and if I had done that I would have screamed I don't know where my where am I all right I gotta go look for my design I've made a lot of different things so far and I I know never mind I, I got down to it pretty quickly all right I just have to find it I have to find my stream schedule I'm pretty sure it's not here because I'm just like the worst, uh, here it is, I was playing Wolfenstein 2, and I was playing Metropolis Mania 2, I threw Metropolis Mania 2 over to my channel, because I said I'm not just gonna fucking not play it, because I really want to, uh, Wolfenstein 2, Resident Evil 7, and Deus Ex Team Revolution, that was probably the only three games I was playing, I don't know, I'm probably not gonna go back to those, let's be honest here, okay, would I lie to you? No, I love you too much, anyway, uh, kind of just been, you know, tackling the shit out of my YouTube channel right now because I was like, hey, uh, streaming is the pits right now based on, like, my scheduling and the fact that I've been going, hey, uh, I'm gonna stream, and everyone goes, and then I go, hey, uh, I'm probably not gonna stream, and then everyone goes, uh, and then I'm like, hey, I'm gonna stream again, <laughs> and everyone goes, and that's about it, really. So it's like, uh, you know what? I'm just going to not stream. Not because, like, no one's saying it. I'm just going to be like, ah, you know what? I don't want to do the off and on thing again. That's fucking dumb as shit. So I'm going to uh, go in and just try and do my YouTube channel. Because, hey, recording's a lot easier. Hence why I'm recording the Sunday podcast on a Saturday. So I don't have to worry about, you know, scheduling issues or anything like that. See? I got my noodle screwed on straight this morning. Or this evening because it's like four o'clock anywho uh what else i mean that's kind of been the whole thing literally it doesn't sound like a lot but these last few days have been just a fucking mess and in a good way and also in a bad way and also in like a fucking discombobulated way it's like somebody put me in a box with a bunch of other objects and shook me around and, and that was, and then took me out of the box, but all right, there you go, and, and you know, I, I don't know, I'm, it's weird, like, I, fuck, I don't know what's happening anymore, man, listen, my, don't know what's going on, the fucking, like, I don't know, I'm just getting flung into a bunch of different scenarios, and it's just a wild time that I'm having, so that's basically what's been going on with me, hopefully you've been well, though, I mean, don't, don't sit here and be like, oh, I hope you're right, fuck off, all right, I'll be fine, okay, not fuck off to, like, I don't care about how you feel, like, don't stop protect, no, not, okay, here's my thing, right, I don't want you worrying about me, all right, I'm a big boy, okay, like, thank, I appreciate it, I just know you have better things to be doing, that's literally all I wanted to say, all right, I don't really think you need to be spending your time going, oh, I hope that's all right, I, believe me, I'm pretty sure you could fucking doodle a, 
house out of crayon and you probably have a more interesting time than never mind what am i doing am i okay probably not because i've been fucking lord have mercy jesus christ all right so we're we're gonna end that whole miasma by getting irish whipped over to the third buckle that's a weird intro <laughs> Strap on your boots, boys and girls. It's time for the turnbuckle. That's a new intro. So, we've got a lot to talk about because there's so much that happened. Because I missed a week and boy, oh boy, wrestling sure been wild. So, we're going to start off with uh, Paige getting bullied by the Kabuki Warriors. Remember when Paige was like, hey, I got these new tag, this new tag team. And then she went, all right, bye. And then fucked off for like, I don't know, like six months. And then she came back and was like, yep. I got these guys, and they were like, fuck you. So they just, like, beat her up. And then, um, that was about it, which was pretty cool. I like Kabuki Warriors, and that's not just because, uh, they're my literal dream girl. That was weird. I don't know. What, sue me, all right? I like, never mind. Asuka, I will hopefully one day <laughs> be my wife. I had to finish that sentence. I had to. I couldn't just fucking end that. Never mind. Uh, the Viking Raiders get put in another squash match against some Chicago baseball rivals named Rizzo and Brian, and it turns out Rizzo is Matt Seidel's little brother, which I thought was crazy. Hold on, what's his name? Matt? M Matt? No. Matt Seidel brother. What's his brother? Mike! Okay, that's a big fucking belt. I don't know if that's doctored or not. Anyway... Well, yeah, I don't know if that's Mike's, uh, never mind. I'm, well, I don't know how many brothers Matt has. Regardless, it doesn't matter. So that was pretty cool. Um, but I don't know why the Viking Raiders are in yet another squash match. That's a bit odd uh, and also very unnecessary because last time I checked, there were the Viking Raiders. And if I have to keep saying, put them in a match with AOP, where is AOP at? I'm going to scream. And you don't want me to scream because it's not going to be loud because I don't like screaming. Uh, Charlotte and Talia, for some reason, seem to wrestle against the Iconics, who are finally back. I've, it's been a while since I've seen them. Glad to see them. Hooray for them. Uh, and then they get squashed. Oh, okay. Well, guess that's the end of them, I guess. I don't really know. Uh, Rowan and Seth get, have a Falls Count Anywhere match. This is before, uh, Crown Jewel, which I'm going to get to. Uh, Rowan actually puts on a decent Falls Count Anywhere match with uh, Seth and manages to kick out of the curb stomp on the announce table because he gets curb stomped on the announce table and everything uh, just goes a bit wacky. And then Seth actually gets cheered because it's been an, it was actually a pretty decent match. But that didn't last long because remember, it's Seth. Uh, so over... Actually, yeah, this is like all over the place. I literally just fucking jotted these down. I didn't bother like categorizing them between Monday and... Friday and NXT and shit like that. So the whole page thing I think is on. I'm not even gonna lie to you right now. I don't I don't know what brand the Viking Raiders are on. I think they're on Raw. I think they're on Raw. That's about as best as I got. Trying to tell you that happened SmackDown. That Rowan and Seth happened on Raw. I mean obviously that happened on Raw. I mean if the brand means anything. Um so I'm pretty sure this was last week, right? This is when the divorce court happened. Wow, uh, Lana gets mad at Rusev for only wanting to make baby babies. So she gets back. She gets back at Rusev by making babies with Bobby instead. Listen, that's fucking four hundred IQ plays. I don't know about you. Um, <laughs> Rusev was like, "I'm I'm trying to boink," and Lana's like, "I don't want to boink you." So also, you've been cheating on me. I'll show you to cheat on me by. Uh, wanting to boink, I guess. I'm gonna go boink someone else to teach you a boinking lesson? I don't know. Um, also, I just want to point out that Lana is apparently taking Bobby Lashley's word over her own husband that Rusev cheated on her. So instead of Lana going up to Rusev and going, did you cheat on me? And Rusev going, yes or no, because I'm your husband and I wouldn't lie to you. Lana went, Bob, yeah, has Rusev been cheating on me? You know, my husband. Uh, yes, he has. He has? Yes, he has. I believe you over my husband because apparently I've got the IQ of a fucking bent fork. <laughs> I don't know what was going on with that. 
Um, while this, and then, so, Bobby runs out while they're, like, having the whole argument, and then, like, they get into a bit of a scuffle, I think, I can't remember, I'm too lazy to look it up, all I know is, is that apparently B Rusev made Bobby eat his ring, and people popped for it, it's a wedding ring, Bob, I, d you're probably gonna have to get another one, I don't know how it works, but I, I don't know if, if making Bobby Lashley eat your wedding ring was a good idea. I hope it was a kayfabe wedding ring and not your actual one, Bruce. Because if I was Lana, I would have slapped you upside the head. Um, then um, Lana comes in and starts hitting Rusev with a kendo stick. And for some reason, Rusev isn't selling getting hit with a kendo stick. So I'm pretty sure Lana wasn't just... Lana probably wasn't just winding up the fucking whaps, probably. So, you know, that kind of happened. And then Bobby kicks him in the goodies, which is just great. And then as Rusev, I just want to point out, as Rusev is lying in the middle of the ring, okay, holding his family jewels, Bobby is standing on top of him, like over him. Like he, he's got like his legs spread and like Rusev is like curled up in between them. And Lana is like all up on Rusev just and they're just necking on on top of Rusev while this is happening and this is apparently this was the main event this was the main event this didn't start the show okay this wasn't in the middle of the show where we could just fucking forget that and go back to some decent wrestling this was at the end of the show this was the last thing everyone had to see before Crown Jewel where Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair were going to get another fucking uh, convoluted match type together with a bunch of other wrestlers uh, which was just that match was uh, sure um, and then over on NXT NXT was fucking lit um, as the kids say uh, Io Shirai makes a kick ass entrance with a band named Poppy who also opened the show so Poppy opened the show and that shit was good I'm not gonna lie listen that was pretty good I don't know about you it was, it was nice and then Io Shirai came out and then, like, her entrance was just fucking fantastic because it just, like, coupled with Poppy, and it was just really cool. And then, um, the, uh, Regal came out because there was a bunch of ladies, <laughs> a bunch of ladies. I know Shayna was in there. I think Dakota Kai was in there. Um, I think EO was in there. All I know is it was all, it was four, it was eight ladies, and then they were all fighting, and then Regal came out. And then he said, war games in a really cool British accent, and then left. And that was about it. So now the first ever women's war games has been announced. Unless it has, unless it is in the war first ever. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, so that's cool. I don't even have anything to say about that. Because pretty sure you and I both know how good that match is going to be. And then, uh, let's see. Finn comes out. And he cuts a promo on Johnny about how he'll just beat the shit out of him and how he's Finn Balor and he's is just that cool. And how uh, how good he is as a wrestler and how good he is in NXT and just all together. And I love that. And then Moxley over on AEW comes out with a promo um, about the whole unsanctioned match between him and Kenny Omega. And he's upset because the match is unsanctioned, which means it won't count to the win-loss record. And everybody else is like, well, what's the point of having the match then if it doesn't count? And then uh, Mox is like, all right, well, that's fine. I'm just going to fucking kill Kenny then. Um, so that match is going to happen now. I don't really know how to feel about the whole sanctioned, unsanctioned thing. I like it because it adds more legitimacy to the sport, if you want to call it that. Uh, I mean, I don't know. You can. I don't care. Put the label under there if you want to. Fuck it. But, like, I the, I like the idea of Johnny just going, like, ah, whatever. It's an unsanctioned match. I'll just beat him up then. Forget it. If I don't have to worry about winning or losing, I'm just going to use this opportunity to just fucking decimate Kenny. I don't know how Kenny feels about it because that guy decided to come out as fucking Sands during the Halloween special. And there was some people dressed up as Rick and Morty. And then other people dressed up as Orange Cassidy. And that was wild. It was just AEW was just all over the place. Uh, and then over on SmackDown. No, this was during uh, the... Uh, I don't know if I talked about this already. So I'm going to try and skim past it. Um... Brock, no, Ray was like, yada yada Brock, and then Brock was like, hey, I'm backstage, I got your son, 
And then he just fucked him up. And then Ray was like, no, my boy. And then he ran backstage. And then Brock came out and f f fired around to a table. And then Kane came out. This was backstage. This is like in like a locker room. And, 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 and what in the world is his name? Dominic's on a stretcher. And then Brock grabs Kane and F5s Kane onto Dominic. And then Kane is like, I'm going to kill you. He literally said, I'm going to kill you in Spanish, though. Um, that was a crock of shite because Brock ends up beating Kane in a fucking discount UFC slash Goldberg versus Lesnar style match. So for those of you who haven't seen, the match was literally just a fucking UFC match, except both of them were too scared to actually hit each other because it's wrestling. So it was just Kane sort of kicking and, and swiping and Brock just staying away from him. And they huddled in the corner a couple times. Brock got him in a Kimura. That was the end of the match. Are you fucking kidding? <laughs> They bigged up Kane as the guy who was going to come in and actually topple Brock because it's someone who's legitimately toppled Brock before. And then they just went, ah, he's still Brock Lesnar. He's still my guy. Fuck you. And then he lost. Um, that was just fucking, you know, uh, something. Apparently, I don't know if this is this has anything to do with the match or not, but Kane also has a knee injury that requires surgery. So I don't know if that was deduced after the match and that had something to do with the match itself, or the match was the reason for the knee injury. I don't know, but if you're telling, but it seems more plausible, right, that um, the match was like that because of his knee injury, which kind of confuses me because he was using his leg. Unless it was his other leg, I have no idea. Then after the match, Ray comes in with a chair and just just fucking wails on Brock. And then around the end, he like I first time I saw Ray hitting Brock, I was like, oh, there you go, Ray. And then he like he was leaning on the ropes, but the, like you saw him like hold his arm a certain way. And then I noticed the sling for his arm next to like like on his shoulder, and I was like, Ray, are you supposed to have a broken arm? And apparently he was, or like an injured arm. Like apparently Ray was just like, ah, fuck it, I don't. It's adrenaline, so he just started beating him up, and then remembered that his arm was broken, which is weird. So that was something. Coco doesn't like that whole um, illegitimacy either. Uh, the Good Brothers, I think, are the tag team champs. I didn't really focus too much on that, to be fairly. Hold on. Can we go? The the good the good. I'm just gonna fucking look this up, man. I don't care. The Good Brothers, are they the champs now or not? I have no idea. Is this gonna be anything? Oh, The Good Brothers is a movie. Okay. The good the Good Brothers, WWE. Here we go. Are they the... Are Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson brothers? Fuck me. Oh, my lord. I don't really feel like fucking looking it up. They won the tournament, didn't they? It was a tournament with, uh, you know, the, the, the... Wow. Was it like a whole tournament? I can't remember. This happened recently, by the way. I just want to point this. happened on Thursday. I can't be bothered. Please don't hurt me. Okay. The Good Brothers, they I know that they were the ones who won the tournament, though. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that they are the tag team champions. Uh, then we went on to the... T this. I'm pretty sure this is in chronological order. I'm just sort of going down the list right now. Then we, we, we have Tyson Fury we, versus Braun Strowman, which was a match. Um... I'm not really looking at, like, the matches themselves. I'm just sort of looking at all the things that stuck out with me in terms of, like, wrestling news and matches and such, right? So Tyson Fury versus Braun Strowman. Braun came out, and then Tyson decided to just have an entrance. You know when you were playing SmackDown? If you're like me, do you remember when you were me back then and you only did the easy entrances when you did Create a Wrestler because you had no idea how the advanced entrances work? And then when one of your friends came over and was like, oh, this is how you do the advanced entrances, and then you finally figured out, so you just decided to make your own character, like you as a, as a wrestler, and you decided to give yourself the coolest fucking entrance of all time, even though it was literally just a bunch of pyro all over the place and, like, some music that you just really like to listen to and your entrance took, like, eight years, that was Tyson. Like, f a whole five minutes went by of nothing but fireworks and then Tyson came out in some, uh, traditional garb, I assume, and that was about it, and then they had the match, you know, they fiddled around a little bit, um, apparently Braun ran around the ring because... 
That's all he's fucking good for. My man literally can't do anything else. You can't you can't do anything else, Braun? Other you can't be, I don't know, a decent wrestler? You just got a runner. I'm talking. I sound like I'm talking mad shit right now. Braun could physically fold me into a chair if he really felt like it. All I'm saying is you could probably do a little bit more than run around in a circle around the ring and just shoulder block people. I heard he got like tired and he had to do a dad run. That's all I wanted to mention. I just heard that we ran around the ring a bunch. Somebody said one more time and then he ran around the ring again, but he got tired. So he just kind of did a little like half ass jog, which is what I would do because I'm out of shape. Um, but that was just wild. And then, uh, Natty and Lacey Evans. I just call her Natty because I don't feel like saying Natalia, but whatever. Nat Natalia Neidhart came out with Lacey and they were doing the first ever women's match, which was great. And then someone decided to be a shit and throw a water bottle at Natty, which is just cool. Uh, and then I think someone tried to throw a water bottle at Lacey. I think I can't remember. I couldn't see. But I just know that, like, they had to wear, like, they they had to wear, like, full body out suits. And they also had to put on, like, t-shirts as well just to cover, like, their entire bodies. And then they got, like, really emotional at the end and then they hugged. And it was a very progressive moment in on Crown Jewel. I, I don't think it was Jedi. I think it was somewhere else. I'm not 100% sure. But, yeah. So, you know. I'm pretty happy about that, you know, that they did finally actually get to put in a decent match. So that's good. Then, uh, right. So I want to go back to the Tyson Fury match for just a second because uh, the ending to the match, which was uh, Tyson got a power slam from Braun. So Tyson got the Braun power slam, right? Took the pin, okay? Braun said something. I see he was talking shit. He was talking shit. He said someone. He said, "Oh my god." He said something along the lines of like, uh, "You're." He didn't call him any names. It was basically just like, "Yeah, that's what you get." I'm Braun. I'm strong, and you're not. And then he left. And then Tyson, like a couple seconds later, Braun didn't even make it up the ramp. I just want to point out, Braun was like halfway up the ramp where Tyson got up, and then basically tried to co co coerce him back into the ramp by calling him a pussy, which is fucking hilarious. <laughs> and Corey tried to save it by going by you know making it seem like Tyson just had no idea what happened to him. I just like the idea that Tyson just he he took the pin, he took the pin and then got up and then took his outfit off and then I was like I'm ready to fight like Tyson, boss man the match is over bro I don't I don't want to like alarm you or anything but you know the the match you can it's kind of you could come on backstage now. Uh, and I'm also gonna fucking need, like, a good chunk of your income, because you just blew, like, half of the budget on this goddamn pay-per-view for all those fucking fireworks you decided to fucking pull off for some reason. I don't know what was up with that. Um, then, we, uh, we finally got The Fiend versus Seth Rollins, and, uh, they decided to go with that juicy, juicy red lighting again, which was great, um, and it was essentially just Seth... Beating up the Fiend multiple times, over and over again, with a bunch of weapons and a couple things around the stage, I think, and that basically didn't work, and eventually, the Fiend ended up picking up the win, and now the Fiend is the Universal Champion on SmackDown. So, I don't really know what to say about that, to be honest. Uh, also, on... Well, no, this took place after the uh, the show in, in Crown Jewel. Where, uh, so after that, because Braun brought, what's his name? Bray is the, is the Universal Champion, or the Fiend, sorry. The Fiend is the Universal Champion, but he's also on SmackDown. And then uh, Brock was like, we're quitting SmackDown? And I guess they're going to Raw? I don't remember. I didn't really, I probably should have like, watched it again i just know that they did qu he did quit i think he's going to raw now so i guess that kind of sort of answers the whole question of what's going to happen to the universal title on smackdown i guess they're going to change it oh my god if they bring back the world heavyweight championship bro that will be amazing man i can't i would love for them to change that to the world heavyweight championship i hope they do uh if they don't boo but anyway 
So uh, yeah, he is leaving SmackDown for Raw. So that is what he that is what he's doing. I, I just checked my notes. I don't know why I didn't check my notes prior. Leave me alone. Then, uh, so, SmackDown was a bit weird because there was a little bit of some complications between some of the wrestlers getting back to SmackDown because they had to go to Buffalo, I believe. So, uh, they kind of got a little bit stuck. There was a rumor going around that McMahon got into a bit of a disagreement, but they weren't sure what kind of disagreement. They were like, it's probably nothing political or anything like that, but we just know that it's a disagreement. I never... I don't know if it was explicit. Wow. I don't know if it was explicitly said what the actual issue was. I'm going to go ahead and assume it was just flight complications because, I mean, at first, like, because I know Brock and Vince, they got the main people back there. Like, they got the main people who were, who were like, scheduled, like, for the matches and stuff. They got them back there, but a couple other people were kind of stuck. Like, Kofi was stuck, uh, I think. Uh, what's his name? Buddy Murphy was stuck. There was a couple people that were stuck there. But then they eventually did get back. Um, but while that was going on, we kind of had NXT show up on Raw. Wow. On SmackDown because it's for Survivor Series. It's and it's SmackDown versus Raw versus NXT. And NXT left a very impressionable message because all of the top NXT stars just came over and just beat the shit out of everyone, which was hilarious. Except for Sammy getting beat up by Keith and Matt, I don't really know what the point of that was. That was weird, because, like, oh, no, he was like, I I get it now, because he was like, oh, um, hey, uh, don't, don't, step to some of the wrestlers the wrong way because you're going to get hurt. And Sammy was like, like me, for instance, don't step to me because I'm going to hurt you. And then he turned around and he saw Keith Lee and Matt Riddle there and they essentially just chased him on the ring, I think. I don't fucking know. And then they beat him up and then that was about it. And that's basically the the turnbuckle. There we go. Mamma mia. What a fucking wild turn of events this sure has been. It's been crazy. So... <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so, we can now get on back over to the crux of the podcast, which is Halloween. In case anybody fucking forgot, because I sure did. Anywho, so, on Halloween, you, you do a lot of things, you know. You, 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 you eat candy, you, uh, you dress up, you... Uh, you know, you go to Halloween parties like I did, and I remember initially in the first iteration of this podcast or this episode, where I was like, uh, I went to a Halloween party, so that's kind of, you know, my whole celebration for the holiday done and over with, so I don't really need to do anything else, and then I thought to myself, oh wait, I don't have anything Halloween themed over on my channel, I'm actually fucking stupid, um, I had a couple games that I kind of wanted to do, but I was like, I kind of don't want to, like, just sort of turn my channel into just a horror game channel for right now. Because I still have my uh, my other uh, uh, games that I have to play. And I didn't kind of, I just, I don't know. It was, I don't know how to explain it other than the fact of, like, I want to get my, I want to get, like, the games that I've already, like, scheduled out of the way first. Even though, like, I can't do that because I've already, like got a bunch of other games, it's weird, I don't know, it was a weird time, this counts, leave me alone, I'm counting this one, okay, jeez, so, uh, trick-or-treating, okay, that's one of the, that's one of the main things that you do on Halloween, uh, and there were a lot of different times that, uh, there were a lot of different trick-or-treating, uh, adventures that I had throughout my years as a youngling, you know, expressing my love for the spooky, scary day, uh, there was a time where we accidentally scared an old lady once. This was back, like, when I was a wee lad. I was probably around, like, 11, 10, maybe. And I was out with the family, and I was Spider-Man, because I remember seeing my Spider-Man-themed glove um, when I did something that I probably shouldn't have done. Uh, so we were trick-or-treating, and... You know, normally if you're a house that is is welcoming trick-or-treaters, you have the front door open, you know, or you have the lights on, you know, just to let people know, hey, you know, we're here to give you candy and stuff. And this lady, I remember, I, I don't remember entirely. I don't remember like it was yesterday. I just know that her light was on because we wouldn't have just walked up to her house for no reason. So she obviously had to have like some sort of porch light on. So we went up to her and, you know, we knocked on the door and we said, sure. She answered. Okay. And so we said, trick-or-treat. 
And like, and she opened the door. I have to point that out because we were like, you know, trick or treat. And she kind of, and I, she, she clearly didn't know what was going on because she didn't say anything. I don't remember her saying anything to, to us. So we kind of just stared at her for a little bit. And she was, she was, it was more sort of like confusion and, and horror that she was kind of looking at us with, you know, it was a mix between that. And she went to close the door. And for some reason, cause I was like the closest one, right? I was like right next to her. For some reason, I decided to just hold the door. I don't know why, but instinct took over and I just grabbed the door and stopped it from closing. I don't know why. I don't know what I was doing that for. She didn't have candy. It's not like she was like, I have candy, but I'm not going to give it to you because I mean, and then, like, that's literally not what happened. So I just held the door open. And then like, for some reason, uh, like three seconds later, three agonizing seconds later, I was like, what am I doing? And then she closed the door back and then we kind of just sat there like, oh, that was weird. And then we went on about our day. I don't know what was up with that. That was just a very like obscure thing to take place for some strange reason and um it, it we never really talked about it so that was weird uh another thing with trick-or-treating not well yeah with trick-or-treating and halloween in general is you know sometimes you like to dress up and me i was never like the most eccentric halloween costume designer i was basically just one of those kids who went with their mom to the halloween store and i just saw an outfit and i went yeah and my mom went all right then i came home saw that it kind of didn't fit decided to wear it anyway because i'm a child and i don't really feel like you know going back and spending more time in an area that scares the shite out of me so i decided to go as the flash uh woody thomas a ninja spider-man Batman, and I almost went as a Joker, but then that kind of, um, that kind of, I just decided not to because I found out that the outfit didn't fit. So, I went as a Flash once, and I decided it would be a good idea to just run up and down the neighborhood, even before we got any of the fucking houses started, which was great for me, uh, so I'm pretty sure I was more than likely answering the door out of breath. Then I decided to go as Woody. I went as Woody when I was, like, three, and, uh... The one thing my dad loves to keep bringing up is the time that he annoyed the shit out of me by saying, aren't you the rootinest, tootinest cowboy? And I, you know, I just fucking apparently four-year-old me was just not having that. So it's just, maybe it was because he kept mentioning me. I was like, all right, pops, I get it. I'm a cowboy. I don't know. I think that there is a video of it. And oh man, I would sell my soul to watch that video because God almighty, I'd love to see my fucking five head ass in a Woody outfit telling my pops to cool it, all right? daddy <laughs> okay, you're over here cramping my style. Can't you see I'm trying to be a fucking toy cowboy over here? Leave me alone. But uh, then I decided to go as a ninja. I don't know what uh, got me to be a ninja. I, th I, I looked at the ninja outfit because there was a red and a blue one, I think. I got the ninja outfit and I said, oh, ninja would be cool. And then I think I tried to get my little brother to be a ninja. I don't think it worked. So I think I'm, I think I got one of my cousins to also be a ninja and it was stupid because all I wore was the ninja outfit and I didn't have anything else on. And you have to remember this is Halloween. So I was freezing. Um, then I went to Spider-Man. I went to Spider-Man multiple times because I love Spider-Man. And then, um, I didn't really, yeah, it was, it was just like the same outfit. <laughs> I know for a fact I went to Spider-Man multiple times. I went as Thomas once as well. Uh, I think I, I mean, some of the costumes I'll do to one. You gotta spice things up, okay? You can't just be going to the doors as the same goddamn guy over and over again. Alright, I mean, jeez. Like, can, I, I can, I, it, it wouldn't kill me to have a little bit of diversity in my arsenal of Halloween-based outfits, alright? So that's why I decided to go Spider-Man like four times, and I think Woody like twice? I don't remember. It sounds plausible though, because I'm me. So, uh, and then I decided to go as Batman, like, twice, I think, and then the second time I went as Batman, I ended up losing, like, a toy accessory to one of my little brother's toys, and he got mad at me for that. I don't know if he forgives me for that. He probably doesn't. It's fine, though. And then I almost went as a Joker, and I saw the Joker outfit. You know those costumes with the masks, and you just know that, and you, you see, you, you take the mask out of the bag of the, that the costume's in. And you don't even put the mask on, and you can already smell what the night is going to be like for you. Now, I don't even... It's one of those things where all I have to do is think about it, and I can smell it now. Now, you have to think, like, the, the texture, the, 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 the 
the material it was made out of. It was made out of like this plastic, like, ple it wasn't, it was like plastic slash, I don't think it was leather, it, it was like slash rubber style material. I think it was just more plastic slash leather type material because it wasn't anything rubber about it. Um, and it was in, you know, the, the Halloween bags, right? Like the bags, like the, you know, one of the, where it's got like the picture on the front, you turn it over and it's just a costume fucking crumpled up in the back and you, you just fucking unclip it and there you go. Have, if I had a nickel for every time I just went into a fucking costume shop and looked at the costume bag and seen that it was open and the costumes nowhere to be found, I'd be rich enough to afford my own costume shop. But, uh, yeah, I, I had to take the Joker mask out of that, and I, now, thinking about it now, I'm kind of glad that I didn't decide to go with that outfit, because the Joker mask was squished, like, in half. So, you looked like a moron when you put it on, because it was like, it, you just looked like a, you looked like flats the flounder, like, front, in, like, facing the front. Like, you just looked like a fucking moron. And me being the small statured lad that I was and still am, the outfit was just stupid on me. So my cousin was just like, I'll wear it. And I was like, great, that saves me a headache. And then I just decided to do that. Uh, and then that was about it. Did I go anything else? I mean, there were a couple times where I wanted to dress up as certain things, but we might get into that. I don't know. Uh, yeah, okay, we're going to get into that in a little bit. So we're not going to worry about that. But anywho... There was also the time that my older brother decided to go as Darth Vader, and he couldn't see out of the mask, so he ran into a tree. Uh, my older brother, I think the only reason why he could not, why he couldn't see out of the Darth Vader mask, was because he um, he made the Darth Vader mask, and I don't think he equated eyes into the equation. I don't 100 percent know. I want to text him just to see, but I don't really feel like wheeling over to get my phone. All right, I'm just going to be honest with you right now. I just know that he did run into a tree, and this was a tree that we had in front of our house, and it was there for a long time, and then we decided to cut it down. Sad face. Uh, I learned how to climb trees on that tree. <laughs> and my uh, dude, uh, based off of a recent discussion I had with my older brother, he fell out of that tree a couple times. I'm not laughing at the, I am laughing at the fact that he fell out of the tree. He's fine. He's a big boy. And anyway, um, so, you know, that tree, we, me and that tree, we had a couple special moments, you know what I'm saying? Of, of me just climbing him and just, you know, hanging off of the branches and shit, you know, and I like that. It was pretty nice. But, um... I just know that after the whole Darth Vader thing, we uh, we kept the lightsabers, and the rest, like a good few years down the line, was just consistent of, you know, us, me, me, and my brothers just whacking the shit out of each other with the lightsabers, and that was about it. And I distinctly remember breaking at least one. I can't remember if it was, uh, you know, the lightsabers that are like the tubes. And, like, you flick it out, and it, and it becomes a lightsaber. Like, I think we broke it by flicking it out too much. Because I remember, like, I don't know. No, I think, there. here's my thing, right? We either broke it in one of many ways. We either broke it by flicking it, broke it by whacking ourselves too much with it, broke it by fiddling around with the different tubes and, like, accidentally ripping one of them off, or some other, like... I don't know, weird, uh, lightsaber-esque damage that we may or may not have caused it is weird. Um, yeah, half the costumes barely fit me. Um, I'm pretty sure that if I went up to a Halloween store now and decided to get a Halloween costume, I wouldn't be able to shop in the men's section. I would have to shop in the child section, which is great for a 23-year-old man to do. I sure would love to do... Is that for your child? Oh, no, madam. I am the child. Thank you. And then I would proceed to leave and want to hang myself because of she saw a 23-year-old man buy a costume meant for a fucking 12-year-old. That would be, I, let me tell you, that'd be great. Anyway. So, I just want to point out, so you, 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 by now, you've obviously understood that I'm not tall. I'm under six feet, which means I'm a fucking toddler, apparently. Ladies, what? Sorry. Um... So, I want to take you guys back on down to the wonderful world of 2018, where senior me decided, hey, it's Halloween, and I'm a senior. I'm allowed to dress up. That's exactly what I'm going to do. This isn't going to backfire in any way. I mean, it didn't backfire, because it literally wasn't that big of a deal. I just want to point out that um, 
I just want to reiterate again, small, okay? Can't wear any full-grown adult costumes that actually look fucking decent. I have to wear child costumes that don't have any thought put into them, and they, it's literally just a shit-looking costume. So, decided to do that. Decided to get a child's costume, and I look like a fucking idiot. Okay? So, I, um, I went as Batman for, uh, for the Halloween. I can't even remember what I fucking wore. I think I wore, like, underwear and a t-shirt underneath the costume and my shoes, obviously, because I'm not going to school without shoes on. I was a fucking Yahoo in high school, okay? I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I was a mess in high school. Like, 16-year-old Ed to, to, like, 19-year-old Ed was an enigma. I was a goddamn, like, Picasso painting. Shit didn't make sense when I was going to high school, okay? I didn't give a shit about myself for, like, the first, for, like, the last two years of high school. I didn't care how I looked, how I dressed, what I ate. I was just a goddamn, I was, I threw myself down a hill for fun in high school multiple times. Okay, there was, like, this was when I, no, I think this is, like, I don't think this is Mount Pleasant. This wasn't Mount Pleasant. This was Tally. Yes. This was Tally. Because there was no hill at Mount Pleasant. Right, there was not. Okay, never mind. That was not, okay. I still threw myself down a hill in Tally because I, I was just that guy. I was him. I was one of them. I was one of them. Oh, man. Oh, that's fun to realize. Oh, boy. But, uh, jeepers, man. It wasn't until, like, the fucking ass end of my senior year where I was like, maybe I should start giving a shit about, like, you know, everything. So, um, decided to go as Batman for Halloween for my senior year, and that was a miasma because I, uh, I decided I'm gonna wear a costume. And, again, small boy, child costume, I look like an idiot. It was just this... I mean, I looked about as good as I was probably going to look. How good do you... I want you to go ahead and I just want you to look at... Oh, I'm going to do it for you. Here, look. We're going on a journey. Batman... Batman... Kids... Costume. Okay? Images. Well, it is 2019, so a lot of these costumes are probably going to... Oh, yeah. I pro oh, there it is right there. There it is right there. Uh, that was the exact costume I wore. Not even making this up. That was the exact costume I wore. It was... Okay. Type in, right? Type in Batman Kids Costume on Google. And scroll down to where... You know the... Do you see that? Not the Lego. Fuck me. Oh, I swear to God, I wish I had went as fucking Lego Batman. Oh my God. I would have been... Uh, that would have been the fucking epitome of greatness, but no, I didn't go as the Batman, I didn't go as the Batman with the built-in, like, six-pack, so that I actually looked decent, no, I didn't do that, I want you to go down to one, two, third row, one, two, three, four, five, yes, that one, the fifth from the left, I went as that Batman, why did I go as that Batman, because I fucking hate myself, that's why, I I can't believe I went as that Batman. And it, I know, I know what you're thinking. I was not stupid enough to tuck my fucking shoes. I mean, tuck my pants into my shoes. I decided to wear, you know, the big fucking dumbass looking feet that like are coupled together by the fucking dingy ass like rubber or like the little elastic, you know, the Velcro thing. I decided to do that. And I'm pretty sure, oh man, I didn't get any of the Batman costumes with the muscles. Of course I didn't get the Batman costumes with the muscles. Why would I? Why would I even bother trying to make myself look semi-decent? No, I'm going to get the shittiest Batman costume I can find. Because I'm just, I'm just a, a fucking mess. I decided to do that. They decided to call in all of the costume goers. So all of the seniors who took the time to actually put in a, a, like a nice amount of effort, come to the come to the front, come to the little foyer, cause uh, you know um, the the school I went to. I'm pretty sure I went to Mount Pleasant. I, that I did that. You know, we went into the. I did that. Okay, I went to the fucking uh, the foyer area, 
and then I um, I kind of just stood around for a little bit because I mean I didn't really have like a it wasn't like a group of people that I could just walk up to and go hey hey don't I look like a fucking man I there were like two other people who I knew thank God who were also Batman themed but their costumes were like a little bit more thought out than mine and I just looked like an idiot and we took pictures there's pictures of me man I don't know if you're gonna be able to find it I don't know if you can because it's old you probably could if you think about it I don't know where you would go to look but it's probably in like 2018 Halloween maybe fuck me that picture is probably up there man I wouldn't go look now, but I don't know where I would find it. I have no idea where I would find it. It would have to be in, like, alumni or something. I don't know. It's probably there. But just look for the fucking dumbass Batman outfit I decided to go as. Because that was a fucking mess. I don't even know why I decided to even fucking do that, bro. That was terrible. But, um, uh, I just look like an idiot. There were, so, aside from that, aside from the costumes that I decided to actually dress up as and realize how fucking stupid I looked at, there were a couple costumes that I actually wanted to dress up as a couple times, where I actually wanted to put in a decent amount of effort. There was one Halloween where I wanted to dress up as Steve Urkel, and then there was another Halloween where I wanted to dress up as Marty McFly, and I, oh man, Jesus Louise, help me. Uh, I thought of the Steve, Steve Urkel costume, like, when I was, like, I don't know, it's just one random point in school where I was like, I want to dress up as Steve Urkel for Halloween. And I was like, I could probably do that. I'd probably, probably get some suspenders, you know, some high water pants, some big ass glasses, and just cut my hair a certain way. And then bada bing, we got Steve Urkel. And then Marty McFly, I was like, okay, all I need to do is just find a sleeveless puffy jacket, some jeans, and like a nice dress shirt. And then bada bing, I'm Marty McFly. I just can't get the, the decent haircut because, you know, I'm, I'm not Michael J. Fox out here. But uh, then I decided I wanted to go to a fucking beer bottle because I literally was just in the Halloween store and I just went, oh, a beer bottle, huh? That's actually kind of just stupid enough to make me want to dress up as one. So I wanted to do that. But, uh, you know, I never did. And we kind of just never really spoke about it. Um, uh, speaking of Halloween costumes, speaking of ho costume shops, I myself was never really a massive fan of uh, Halloween shops, mainly because they were spooky as shit. Uh, the, the biggest factor is that I did not like about the co uh, costume shops is, uh, the mask aisles, the aisles with all the spooky, scary masks, you know, uh, like nine year old me was like, <laughs> no, that's not happening. I just couldn't do it. And I distinctly remember huddling up with me ma and walking down the aisles and not wanting to look at any of the masks cause they were spooky. And my mommy was the only person to protect me because she was brave and, uh, and I loved her. I still love her anyway. Um, what in the world? There was also the animatronics as well. You know, the ones, the ones where you walk by and they go, ooga booga booga. And I'm just like, you know, I'm okay. Luckily, I didn't really run into a lot of them. I mean, I only ran into like a couple and like there was this one store that I remember walking into and they were so fun because they decided to put an animatronic in the front of the store. So I didn't even walk into the store. It took, I, again, I think, oh man, I think it was either one of two things. It either took my mom to, to you know, walk me through or it, it literally took one of the employees to get up and turn it off just so I could be, you know, uh, confident enough to walk in. Uh, okay, but yeah. That was, uh, that's basically what happened. So, I'm, I'm, yeah, obviously now I'm like, I don't really care. I'm probably still going to get spooked because it's just, like, eh, I don't like that. I don't like the feeling of, like, when's it going to happen? You know, it's not really fun. But, um, then, uh, again, as I got older, like I said, I obviously got less scared. And one of the things that I slowly kind of, like, got into was going to Frightland. Because uh, before I was like, uh, no spooks for me, thanks. I'm driving. But now I'm like, hey, uh, that would be pretty cool. Just because I'm smart enough and old enough to know, like, well, obviously nothing's actually going to happen. Like, I'm not going to get fucking, like, chainsawed or anything like that. You know, my suspension of disbelief is suspended enough to where I can believe that I'm actually going to get chainsawed. But I'm smart enough to know that's not going to happen. It's a fake chainsaw, silly. You're not going to guess all it's going to do is fight. It's going to scare the shit out of me, though, if you do it properly. But, you know, um, I uh, I wanted to go to Frightland, 
And that's kind of why I was more keen on going to a lot of Halloween themed parties because I'm like, hey, you know, it's better than just sitting around. Uh, I never really got around to going to Vryland, unfortunately. It was just uh, complications due to, you know, a lot of different factors like time and, you know, stuff like that. But, say la vie, what can you do? Anywho, uh, I also want to point out, I just want to give a shout out to my little brother who, when he was younger, obviously, you know, him being the youngest, right? He's kind of got a little bit of, he, he was like an old person. He kind of still is, but he kind of grew out of it. But like my little brother would probably not go to bed. He wouldn't start winding down for bed until like 730. And he would probably be out like a light around like nine o'clock. And me, you know, I probably wouldn't go to sleep until like 9, 30, 10 o'clock. And then that obviously grew into, you know, whenever I was tired. But for him, it was always like 8 o'clock. Not even like somewhere around like 9 o'clock. Like 9.30 was like late for him. So you have to think of like going out around like 7 for Halloween and not coming back until like... 8.30 at the latest, maybe 8.45 at the very latest, and, like, having to do all that walking around, so you, you, you I mean, call me surprised whenever he would come home and just, like, he would always come home after we were done, and I don't know how, but he would slip away from everybody and just go to bed, <laughs> and I don't mean he would get ready for bed, I mean he would just go to bed, he would s sleep in his costume, and he would just just plop on the bed and that would just be the end of him so when i uh when i would get back and i would just be you know chilling eating some of the candy or like seeing what candy my older brother had and trying to see if i could trade with him you know uh you would just come up a little bit later and then just see him just completely dead not actually but you know what i mean but uh yeah that's basically what happened on on halloween and everything you know what i mean that's uh that's all that's all a Halloween well not for likes for the entire podcast but that's essentially what what went on in terms of Halloween for me up until like now because I don't obviously I don't really do like Halloween themed well you know I don't go trick or treating anymore so there's like you know that kind of cuts that off immediately after you like hit a certain age you know what I mean I guess I mean I don't know uh there isn't really. Is there trick or treating for grown ups? I don't know. I know there's like trunk or treat, where like they'll do the trick or treating out of like the trunks of their cars and stuff, which I think is pretty cool, but I guess that's still like in line with like children. I have no idea. I Trick or treating for me counts as going to a Halloween party. Who knows? Anywho, um, now we're going to get into the spooky parts of Halloween known as fears. Ooh. So. Um, I don't want to say not a lot scares me. Obviously, a lot scares me. I'm I'm not like easily spooked, but I I can get pretty spooked. Um, can we just turn our attention back to the Resident Evil um stream that I did a while ago, where I nearly shot myself multiple times because of the bees. I didn't like them. The, any game, any game that has like oversized bees. Or bees that in general, for that matter. I'm like, no, thank you. I'm good. Except for, like, Far Cry 4. Like I said, just any if they're, like, not in, like... If, if they don't have, like, extreme detail, I'm not really going to be scared. But that's kind of why I didn't like um, Resident Evil 7. Or at least Mom, the one house? the I don't... What is her name? My brain wants to say Marjorie. <laughs> Marguerite? I think it's Marguerite. Oh, shit, is it actually Marguerite? Oh, my God. It might be Mar Marguerite. Hold on. I think it actually is Halloween. Right? Uh, I mean, Mar... 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 Yeah, it is Marguerite! Look at her! Oh, my God! She was creepy, too. Like, oh, my Lord. But, um... Yeah, there's, a, there's not really, like, too much that scares me. But obviously, you know, what scares me? Bees scare me. I'm going to go ahead and assume that that's just like an irrational fear. Like I am, I don't know, that's not an irrational fear. That is a fear. I am mortified of bees. Like I hate bees. I don't, I don't like the fact that they can sting you. I don't like the buzzing sound. I don't like the fact that they can hover in front of you. I'm not a fan of that at all. Um, 
I just don't like it. I, it's just terrible. And when Resident Evil decided, hey, you know that thing that you're terrified of? Yeah, we've fucking quadrupled it in size. Have that. All right. Enjoy that. So, uh, you know, I didn't. Uh, what else am I afraid of? I'm afraid of the dark. And it isn't even like... I, I, I'm just afraid of the dark, man. I don't like the dark. I don't like the fact that I can't see what is in what is in the darkness. I don't like that. I don't I don't know what's there. Anything could be in the darkness, and anything that can see in the dark is automatically one step ahead of me, and, or anything that they're hunting for, you know, because it's dark, and I have no idea what could be there. I've just repeated myself. Hope you're happy. So, you know, you know that thing when you turn the light off in the kitchen and you run upstairs and you hope a demon doesn't get you? Yeah, that's that's literally my thought. But, like, even, like, because I sleep with the lights off. I'm like, you know, I don't I don't like having any type of light or noise pollution because I'm a light sleeper, you know? So uh, I tend to like a, a room or even a house if I can actually get it, which is a lot fucking harder than you would think. Trust me. That was very loud. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> so, okay. Anyway, but um, I, I I like it when it's quiet, and when it's quiet, uh, and dark, my brain is like, is there something spooky in the corner of the room over there? And I'm like, no, no, there's not. I'm trying to sleep. Okay, I just want to go to bed. All right, it's a little bit hot in here. I'm just gonna poke my foot out of my blanket for a little bit to to cool myself off. So you're just gonna fucking let a demon get your fucking feet, huh? You're just gonna let that shit happen. What if a demon gets you? You gonna, you gonna fucking allow that? And I'm like, a demon's not gonna get me. Okay, demon can't get me. All right, I'm fine. All right, I understand that it's dark and it's a bit spooky here, and I will admit it is kind of spooky. But I want to sleep, and that's literally what's been plaguing me for the longest time now. And I don't know, and who knows how long it will. Maybe I'll just, I mean, I'm sort of, like, starting to, like, wean myself away from, like, all right, come on now, like, I want to go to bed. <laughs> and that's about it. But, um, what else scares me? Yeah, I don't really think about this. What else scares me? There is, like, a lot of, like, irrational fears that I get. Like, I'm, I'm obviously scared of getting into a car accident, but I'm more so scared of getting into a car accident that I caused, like, a bad one. Like, where both of our cars are, like, smoking, and I'm like, shit. Like, that would terrify me to my core. Um, social anxiety doesn't really count. Like, I can't be like, oh, I'm scared of talking to people. It's like, well, like, that's not really, like, a, a fear, you know? I mean, okay, never mind. That's not really classified as a fear. I do have the fear. I do have a fear of the dark, and I do have a fear of bees. All right, in terms of fear, what am I, like, what, what am I, what am I genuinely afraid of? No, I'm not going to lie. I'm genuinely afraid of getting into a bad car accident. Like, that genuinely scares me. I just don't like to think about it. Just because, like, I wouldn't... I don't know. It, it, there are so many different factors that I would have to, like, connect together to where I'm like, well, how would I... Even if I... God forbid if that ever happened, what would I do? How would I get myself out of this situation? And the fact that I can't answer that question right off the bat... Oof, that's the oof a doof That's not good for me. What else am I genuinely afraid of? Oh, there was one thing. You know what I'm scared of? I'm scared of getting attacked by a fox. No, I'm terrified of getting rabies. I am, I'm so scared of getting rabies, bro. You don't understand. Because I heard that once you get rabies, that's it. You're dead. Like, there's no cure for rabies. The, you have to know that you have rabies. And you have to get to the doctor as soon as possible so that they can at least try and cure you for rabies. Because once you get rabies, it is the worst. You, like, go insane. And I, I'm okay. I don't want to, I don't want to deal with that. I'm good. I, I was on Reddit one day and I, I heard what it's like to have rabies. I'm good. I'm okay. Mm -mm, mm -mm, I don't want rabies. No, sir. And that kind of ties into, like, I'm terrified of getting attacked by a rabbit animal. I am horrified because it could happen anywhere at any time and I'm not going to be prepared for it. There was that one video that I saw where the guy got attacked by a rabid fox, I think, and, like, the fox went for his loaf of bread, and that was it, and then he ran off. I don't know what's going to happen to me. I just, oh, man. It would, ugh. It's just, the, it's literally the worst. I don't know what I would do if I get, if I got attacked by a rabid animal, because that rabid animal would more than likely try to kill me. 
You know, it isn't like an animal playing around like it were a nibble at me. It would literally attempt to bite my flesh off. And if it breached my skin and got into, you know, my, my, my blood and all my, my important bits and gave me rabies, I fuck me. I wouldn't panic. I wouldn't panic. But in the back of my mind, I'd be like, oh, fuck, I have rabies. Like, oh, fuck, if I don't do something about this right now, I'm going to get rabies. And I'm going to die. Not I might die or there's a good chance. No, I'm going to die I'm go if I do not treat this immediately. So, oof. no, thank you. I'm okay. What used to scare me? Oh, man. Does anybody remember the time when I was playing Night in the Woods? It was like the first episode and I was talking about the time where I was afraid that a train was going to crash in my room. That genuinely scared me. Uh, what else used to genuinely scare me? Oh, boy. Uh, the, the, um, some of the, well, I mean, I was a kid, but, like, some of the big, like, faced mascots used to scare me. Like, if I was, like, seven, six, and I went to Disney World, and, like, I saw, like, Goofy or Mickey or something, they would just scare me. I would just be like, oh, no thanks, I'm good, I'm okay. But I think that's just due to my fear of, like, oversized, like, faces, I think, oh my lord, there was this, I don't know if anybody has seen the fucking collaboration video, the Courage Cowley Dog, uh, Freaky Fred collaboration video, I don't even want to go looking for it, because I want to, you have to see it, but just look up Freaky Fred collab video, and just look at the thumbnail, and then go to where the thumbnail is, it's the most unnerving part of the whole video. I hated watching that, and me being an adult, I looked at that one, ooh, that's scary, but I was like, I'm an adult, I'm not gonna be like, eh, scary, but that terrified me, it was the worst, and then I had recently watched The Witch, and that was a horrifying movie as well, that movie is so good though, man, I fucking love The Witch, it's so good, you have to watch that movie, man, holy moly, I fucking love that movie, man, but anywho, that movie terrified me, um, and after, I, it was like a couple days after I watched that, I'd watched the collab thing, and I saw that thumbnail, and that just shot of Fred on the toilet with his fucking narrow-ass eyes and his big eye sockets, and that just cold stare to me, not courage, to me, because he was looking at the camera, and it was just the worst, man. It was the where I fucking hated that so much, bro. Like, that took Courage to a whole nother level. No wonder Courage was terrified of him. If that is how Courage sees his fucking, like, enemies, no wonder he's terrified. Goodness gracious, bro. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. That terrified me to no end. Like, it legit... I'm not even making this up. Like, that legitimately got me for, like, the next, like, two hours. And, like, a little bit into the next day where I was like, ooh, that was creepy, and that was it. But after that, you know, so that, that, you know, that, that used to scare me. That, that scared me pretty good. Brightburn used to scare me. Brightburn fucked me up. Okay. I was not expecting Brightburn to be the wildest time that I decided, like the wildest trip I ever went on. Cause I'm not going to lie. I mean, the first time I saw it, I was a little bit high. So, you know, I was kind of watching it cold. Whoa. This guy means business. And then I saw that truck scene where he took the truck and he dropped it and it went like that. And I went, whoa, this guy means serious business. And then the part where the guy was like, it's okay, you're safe now. And he went, zoop, through the fence. And, the, and I went, okay, this, oh, okay. And then the, the, the part where she looked in the window, so he's right there in the camera. And then she all throughout the house, and then she fell, wow, oh my god, oh boy, oh boy, man, jeepers creep, it was, just, it's not him that scares me, it's the idea that something, just put that into perspective, Brightburn, that, that kid is essentially like if we, like, breaking news came, and they were like, oh, a meteor's gonna hit the earth, and blow up the entire planet, it's that, it's that feeling of, like, there is nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do at all about that whole endeavor. It's going to happen. And if you ever, like, it's the whole thing about, like, with, with him, 
if you crossed his path and he didn't like you, you couldn't, like, talk your way out of it. You couldn't run from him. You couldn't hide from him. You couldn't fight him. You were going to, he was going to kill you. And it was more, it was either going to be quick and painless or it was going to be excruciatingly gruesome. And, you know, that was just, yee, gad, man, that whole fucking movie, Mamma Mia. But anywho, that fucking got me. But uh, I want to go back to what scares me. The, my main fear, my main fear that I still cannot get over to this day is the fear of the unknown. I am terrified of the fe- of the unknown. I have, if, there, if I'm, it's kind of the main reason why I'm such an indecisive bastard. Because I, like, some of the decisions that I've had to make in my life. Where I'm like, oh, is this going to be a good idea or is this going to be a good idea or what's going to happen if I make this decision or is anything going to happen if I make that decision? Like not knowing the outcome of certain things like that I have to make a decision on or just not knowing what's going to happen if I do this or if I don't do this, you know, that sort of thing. Like, I don't know, man, I can't, I, it's not some. it's an intangible thing. Like I can't. I can't, I can't, I almost can't control it in the, in a sense, you know what I mean? Not the fear, like, the, the idea of, like, just trying to get a grip on, like, like, if I was, like, what would happen if I were to jump into the, okay, for, for the sake of, like, the, the, the topic, what would happen if I were to jump into that void? If I jumped into that void, would I be okay? Or would something bad happen? And if something bad were to happen, would I be prepared for it? Or would would I not be able to deal with it? Or what would happen if I were decide if I decided to stay on the ledge and I don't jump at all? Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? What happens if I just stay here? Will the will the thing in the void itself go away and if I jump then I will have even less of an opportunity than I did before? Or will I jump and the opportunity will still be the same? Is it a, should I jump at all? Should I think about jumping? How far should I jump? How long is the drop? Am I going to be safe when I land? Am I going to get a little bit hurt? I'm going to get a little bit hurt. You see what I mean? This is why I don't like the unknown. I, I have to know. You have to tell me. I'm not that type of person where I'll go into the movie theater and be like, tell me that. I don't say a movie unless I know the ending of it. I gotta know, okay? I, I'm not buying a ticket unless I know the entire synopsis of the whole movie, okay? Otherwise, I, I'll just scream the whole time. <laughs> but no, but like, seriously though, like, goodness gracious, man. The unknown scares the shit out of me. And there are some people who are just like, ah, wing it. And I'm just like, how do you live your life like that? You are just a fucking monster. Living your, live, just living your life out here is not really like, I'm sure they probably considered a lot of different things, but like, I don't know, man. Just the thought of, like, I can't even think it. I can't even fathom, like, just doing something without thinking about it. I can't do it. I would, I, and especially if it is something that is a big fucking deal. Like, I, if it's a big, big deal, I'm like, well, I'm obviously, I mean, obviously I'm not going to fucking just go, ah, okay, how can I put this? If it's, a, if it's a decision that pertains only to me, like, it's not going to affect anybody else, it'll still take me fucking forever to like, you know, come to that decision because I don't know what the best outcome is. And that's the only thing that I want to do is I want to come to the best outcome I can possibly get to. And if I don't know which decision is going to bring me to that, per, like, per, like that, hmm, that the best outcome that I can think of, I'm going to have a hard time making that decision. Listen, I explained myself. If you're like, oh, Ed, you're just being a big baby, mate. You're not fucking, you're just sitting there being indecisive and whatnot, taking way too long, making decisions, mate. Do me, Ed, in, okay? Fucking sitting there waiting for you, taking way too long, mate. All right. Bloody hell. Get on with it, mate. I'm waiting here. My accent fucking flew all over the place. But listen, all right, just, I don't know. That's the one thing that scares me, is the unknown. Can you relate? Cool. If you can't, ah well. And then irrational fear. I was gonna do the last topic, which was gonna be good horror games, but you know, I mean, we're already kind of at a decent length, so I'm just gonna finish off with irrational fears. Hmm. That B thing isn't an irrational fear. Hold on. Because there's an actual fear of. Oh yeah, I was at the fear of animatronics as well. 
What is the favorite phobia? Bees. Apiphobia. Oh yeah, ap apiphobia, like apiary. Yeah, ap. Yeah, okay. Well, obviously, if it's got a name, I guess it's not an irrational fear. I also have automonophobia as well, which is the fear of animatronics. Like, th you know, you know, dolls, you know, like Chucky. He was the, I'm going to go ahead and assume he was the main reason I have automonophobia. Because <laughs> he, he scared the shit out of me when I was little. Um, like dolls, uh, the FNAF animatronics were fucking weird. I don't even want to like, <laughs> listen, because me and Tendo were talking and uh, I forget what we were like, but we were talking about like VR and I think he was like, are you going to get, <laughs> he was like, are you going to get Five Nights at Freddy's? Because I was like, oh yeah, um, Five Nights at Freddy's VR is out. And he's like, are you going to get it? And I was like, nope. And he's like, Tch. and I was like, I'm not getting it. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not getting it. I could barely fucking deal with them when they weren't in VR. The fact that they're going to be like full scale. And I'm going to be in, like, a, a realistic three-dimensional world with them in it? I'm okay. I'm okay. Listen. Listen, pal. I'm okay. I don't know about you, but I'm going to be over here where I don't have to worry about them. See you later. But mama mia, that was bad. That, I, I, that, that would have been real bad for me. I was not even going to bother putting myself in that. But uh, a rational fear, like, what is something that I really don't even need to be worried about? I don't really know, to be honest. Do I even have any irrational fears? Anything out of the ordinary that shouldn't... I don't want to say that shouldn't scare me, but something that just doesn't scare, like, the rest of the world, I suppose. What is it? Oh, no. I know I have at least one. I'm really trying to think, because there's a lot of shit that I'm just, like, irrationally afraid of. I think it's, like... I'm sometimes afraid of, like... Even, you never, you ever been, like, driving, and you're about to turn into a lane, and you even, like, you do the little, like, look behind, you do, you check your blind spot, and you turn into the lane? I'm, like, terrified of a car popping up out of nowhere. Not, like, genuinely popping up, but, like, I'm, I'm terrified of turning into a lane and then realizing that there was a car behind me the whole time, and it, like, beeps, and I almost cut it off. That would scare the shit out of me. Um, it's mainly just road-based, because, oh, man, I'm so terrified when I'm driving, man. Like... If I'm terrified of making, like, I'm terrified of going down a one-way road the wrong way. Uh, I'm terrified of hitting someone. Well, no, that's not really an irrational fear. No, but I do, I am, like, genuinely terrified of, like, accidentally cutting. I'm just terrified of just making road mistakes. Honestly, like, <laughs> I, I have an irrational fear of making road mistakes. And I'm not even trying to make this up. Like, it, it does, like, actually scare me. The thought of, like, you know... Cause I, oh my lord, getting like, you know when you take just like a couple seconds too long at a green light, and like I won't even be on my phone, I'll literally just be fiddling with something, or I'll just be like thinking or something. Like thinking re real long and hard about something, and I like, I'll get that beep of like, hey pal, the light's green, that terrifies me. Um, I don't, it, it's just road mistakes, that's the best thing, like it's not even, that's literally it, I, that's all I have. That is my irrational fear is right there, it's just road mistakes, cause I just... I don't like it. I don't like it. I try my hardest to be the best driver on the road. And and when when I get beeped at, whenever someone else beeps, like whenever I'm walking, when even when I'm not in my car and someone beeps and it's not at me, I genuinely get a sense of relief of like, oh, thank God that wasn't aimed at me. And whenever I'm in my car and I get and I hear a beep and it's to a car that's like in another lane or a car that's like behind me and the car behind that car is beeping at that car that's behind me i'm like oh thank god like i genuinely get a sense of relief whenever that sort of shit happens so that's my irrational fear and you know what that's gonna do it for this episode of the podcast shouts out to everybody who joined really hope you guys enjoyed this episode if you want to catch more content like this be sure to like the video and subscribe if you want to wow that was weird i almost fucking did the same thing again Anyway, I'm going to catch you guys in the next one.